click the bell icon to turn on notifications. We've made the accompanying exercise files for this tutorial available for free. Just click the link below in the video details to get these. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. In this module we're going to take a look at creating our first form. And we've made a pretty good start on creating the Esprit de Tour database and also the Night Movies rental database. But next we're going to look at the use of forms to not only protect the database, but to enable people to do more complex tasks within the database. So essentially, we're going to start to build forms that are focused on what people need to do. And forms in general are the way that most users will interact with the database. So far, we've been using many tools that are really more used by designers and developers rather than tools that end users would use. So we're going to start out by just building a very simple form using the simplest approach. And really, the objective of this module is to really get you used to the idea of looking at form properties. So it might be that I want to build a straightforward form to perform a task. For example, a form to maintain the list of countries in the Esprit de Tour database. So the first thing I'm going to do is from my navigation pane is just select the country table. I'm then going to go up to the Create tab, and you'll see in the middle here we have a Forms group with many, many different options in there. We have a Form button, which will allow us to create a form. We have a Form Design button, which will allow us to create a new blank form in Design View. We then have just a blank form with no controls or formatting. We have a form wizard. Now we've looked at a couple of wizards so far in this course. I'm a big fan of those. And this is what we're actually going to use in this first example. We then have a navigation pane so that allows you to create a form that allows people to browse to different forms and reports. And then we have a more forms drop down, which gives us lots of different types of forms that we can use. And we will be exploring some of these as we go through the course. Now, in this example, as I mentioned, I'm going to select Form Wizard. So the first thing that Form Wizard does is it looks at the table that we have selected. So in this case, Tuple Country. And it makes a list of all the fields within that table. And if you remember, we only have one field in there, and that is the Country field. And what it basically says is these are the available fields. So in this case, just one of them. Which ones would you like on the form? Now, it's worth noting that if you are designing a form for someone to perform a specific task, you may not need all of the fields to be available on the form. So the first thing you really need to do is to determine which fields the user needs access to. Now, in this case, we only have one field, so I'm just going to add that one field by clicking on the right facing arrow in the middle there which will add the country field over into the selected fields area. And of course, if I wanted to move that back to available fields, I could use these arrows at the bottom, which will move it back onto the left hand side. And I'm going to click on next. Now the form wizard is asking us to select a layout. And this can be a little bit confusing when you first see it, as it's not really apparent that the first and last options are both layouts where you only see one record on this form at a time. So in the columnar layout, however many fields there are, you will see them laid out in columns. With justified, instead of having columns, you basically have the fields in the record spread out across the page. And with tabular and data sheet, you are basically seeing a scrolling list of records and in each row you see the fields of the record. So I'm going to choose tabular for my example. I'm going to click on next and we now need to give the form a name. Now I'm going to stick with my naming convention. So we've been adding tuple on the front for tables. So when I'm using forms, the prefix I'm going to use is FRM. You can then choose how you want to open the form or you can modify the form's design. So I can open 
or modify. Now in this case, we're just going to open the form and I'm going to click finish. And there is my form. So I just want you to note the tabular layout. I also want you to note that in the navigation pane on the left now, I have a new category of forms. And this is the type of form that is highly customizable. However, first let's talk about the data. Each row represents one of the countries in the country table. So if I wanted to delete a country, for example, USA, I can select it and just press the delete key on my keyboard. Alternatively, I could go up to the home tab and in the records group, I have a delete button just there and I could choose to delete record. Now let me just try and delete it and you'll see that I get an error message. So it says the record cannot be deleted or changed because the table tuple trip country includes related records. So that is that referential integrity coming into play. So I'm going to close that. Now, if I wanted to edit this form, so maybe I wanted to change the name of Maldives to the Maldives. So let's just jump in there and add the word the. You can see that I don't get any integrity messages popping up. So editing these is absolutely fine. Now I'm actually just going to delete that back out again. And if I wanted to insert a new country into this list, inserts happen right at the bottom. So you can see I have a little blank field just there. So I can click in there and add a new country of Peru. And when I've made a change, in general, I like to make sure that that's all saved. So I'm going to jump back up to the home ribbon and in the records group, just click my save button. Now note that these countries are in alphabetical order, but now that we've added Peru, it hasn't reorganized itself. So these are no longer in sequence. And I'm going to show you how you can get around that a bit later on in this module. So this is the basic approach for data maintenance in a form. So now we're going to go into the design of the form. So on the form tab, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go into design view. Now this form currently has three sections. You can see there we have a form header, which also includes that country title. We then have a detail section, and this is where all of the countries are listed. And then finally, we have a form footer. And at the moment, there is no footer on this form. Now I'm going to make one small change here to the header, and I'm going to cover this a little bit more later on. But you can see here that the header gets a default content. So it's just picking up form country tabular, which is what I named this particular form. But I can go in and change that. So I'm just going to delete that out and change it to countries we visit. It's also worth noting that when I'm editing, there is an orange border around where I'm typing. So if I select the country field, you'll see that I then get that orange border, which means that I'm currently editing that field. And if I click up here in the tools group on the property sheet, you can now see all of the properties for the selected field. And you can see in here, there are loads and loads of properties. And we're certainly not going to cover all of these, but we are going to take a look at a few of them. So let's start with the top one, which says name. And the field is called the country field. So that's fairly straightforward. What is the source? Well, it says here that the source is country, which it is in this form. And it's the country field in the tuple country table record. What's the format? Well, currently the format is blank. Now there is a default for format, which is based on the fact that this type of field is a text box. So if it's blank in there, it usually means that it is a text box as that is the default. So essentially we have a text box on a form. Its name is country and its control source is country and it has a blank format. Let's go down these properties and just go to font size. And you can see currently there, I have a font size of 11 in action. So I'm just going to change that to, let's change it to 20. 
and you can see immediately that that's reflected in our form design. Now if I go back to form view, so I'm going to right click and go to form view, you can see that it's increased that font size, but you can also see that it's now kind of, I can't really see the names of those countries. So I'm going to need to make a little bit of a change. So I'm going to jump back into design view. And I'm just going to drag that down a little bit and just make some adjustments to the size of this box. There we go. Now let me just double check that by right clicking and going back into form view. And I can see that those look a lot better now. So hopefully that gives you more of an idea of the types of things that you can do when designing forms. Now I can see in here there is one correction that I need to make in South Africa. I just need to change that to a capital A. And I'm going to click save. Now I'm going to jump back into design view one more time and note that the country field is still selected. Now, if we right click on that field, I want you to notice at the bottom. So properties is currently open. That's the property sheet that we have on the right hand side. But I also want you to note that we have form properties down here as well. So let's click on that. And now in our pane, we get the properties for the entire form as opposed to just the properties for the particular field that we had selected. And that is one of the most important things when you're using forms is just making sure that you have the right object selected. So let's take a look at some of these fields. Right at the top, we have record source and it says tuple country. And that means that the records here are coming from the country table. I'm going to quickly jump across to this data tab and you can see that one of the properties here is order by. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say order by country. And that means that the entries on the form will be ordered by the country field in the record. So let's see how that affects our form. I'm going to right click and go back to form view. And you can see that Peru is now in the correct sequence. So everything's been reordered into alphabetical order. So whilst Peru is now in the correct sequence, it's still at the end of the records in the table. I'm going to add another country at the bottom here. So that is Canada. And to get this to update by my sort order that I set, I'm going to go up to the home ribbon and just select refresh. And you can now see that Canada has jumped up into the correct position. So that is it. That is your introduction to creating a form. We're going to expand on this idea over the next few modules. So please join me for that. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. In the preceding sections, we started taking a look at how we can create forms. And in this module, we're going to continue looking at the form we made for maintaining the list of countries in the Esprit de Tour database. Now I've returned the size of the country field to its former size of 11 points. And I'm going to jump back into Design View. And what I want to do is I want to look at the form properties. So I'm going to select that from the list. And in the form properties property sheet, you'll see that one of the properties we have is default view. And currently it says continuous forms. Now I'm actually going to change this to single form. And I'm going to return to form view. Now in form view, I no longer have that continuous view with all of the fields in the form. Now in single view, each record occupies one form. And you can see that I have navigation buttons at the bottom. So currently it says I'm on uh, record one of 16, which is Antarctica. And I can use my arrows to go to the next record, which is Argentina. And I can scroll through my records that way. I can also jump all the way to the end to Zimbabwe and I can also jump back to the beginning of Antarctica. I could also, if I wanted to, add a new blank record from here as well. Now in single form view, we can do all of the normal functions. So if I wanted to go in and make any changes to this record, I can click in the country field where it says Antarctica and make the relevant changes. There's nothing different about this. If I wanted to delete the record, 
I could select the record and you'll note that the highlight runs all the way down the page. And I could go up to my home ribbon and select delete record in the same way. Or alternatively, I could press the delete key on my keyboard. So the point I'm trying to get across here is that single form view works pretty much the same. You can view, you can insert, you can modify, and you can delete records. Some other things that you can do is supposing I wanted to filter. I can go up to my filter button. I could go down to my text filters and I might want to say I want to see all the records that begin with C and click on OK. And you can see now that I have four records, the first one being Canada and I can scroll through. We have Costa Rica, Croatia and Cuba. And you can now see that I have that filtered indicator in the bottom bar. So if I wanted to remove the filter, I can just click it and my list is now again unfiltered. I can also search for records. So you can see I have a search field down here. So if I wanted to search, for example, for Africa, you can see it's taken me straight to the first record where it finds that word. So in terms of finding my way around, I can use those controls on the home tab when I'm in continuous form view or single form view. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is just going back to this views group at the top here. You can see currently I have three options. Form view, which is the one that I'm currently in, layout view and design view. And obviously I can switch between these views just by selecting them. And we are going to focus a little bit more on layout view in the next few modules. Now I'm just going to jump back into design view. And we're going to continue taking a look at this property sheet over on the right hand side. Now this option here, allow data sheet view is currently set to no. Now I'm actually going to change this to yes. So basically what we're saying here is that we're going to allow users to also work in datasheet view. Now that I've changed that, if I click back on that view button, you'll see that I now have a fourth option in there, which will allow me to switch to datasheet view. Now bear in mind that data might be selected from a number of tables, which is one of the reasons it's not the same as datasheet view for a table. It's the data that's selected for this form, which may be selected from a number of different tables. And it also may be sorted in a specific way, as it is here, where we've specified the sort order as country. So hopefully that gives you a good idea as to how to work in single form view and also how to utilize some more of those options. We're going to talk about forms more over the next few sections, but before we do, I'd like you to do exercise four, where I'm going to get you to create your own form. So please join me for that. For the next section, you'll want to download the course exercise files. Click the link below in the video description to get these. You can also scroll through the details to find timestamps for each section in this course. If you're enjoying this training, please leave us a comment. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. It's now time for me to set you exercise four. And all I really need you to do is to create a genre maintenance form for the Night Movies database. And here is my genre maintenance form. And as you can see, exercise four, that version contains my solution. And you can find that in the exercises folder. Now note in the navigation pane, you'll see the name of the form. So forms genre maintenance. And I just want you to note a few things about this form. Its default is single form and data sheet view is allowed. So if I go up to my view drop down, you can see that I can see data sheet view. The genre within the maintenance form data set is sorted by genre name. And in addition to producing a working form, I've also selected a theme for the form. Now, I haven't shown you how to do this, but it might be good for you to have a little experiment and see if you can work it out. So when you're in design view, see if you can select the theme of slice. Also for the header, I want you to change the style of the header so it has no border, but it's shadowed. 
and I want you to make the single control in the form, so the one that holds the genre itself, make that a little bit taller so that all of the text fits in. I want you to also make sure that that has a shadow effect as well. And a shadow, just for your note, is considered to be a special effect. So I want you to try and give that a go. There are a few things in there which we haven't covered yet, but don't worry too much if you get a little bit stuck. We are going to be covering those things later on. I just want you to have a real explore around and see if you can work out how to do it. That's it for exercise four. I will see you in the next module. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. In this module we're going to be taking a deeper look at Layout View and we're going to start out by creating a new form. So if you remember in the preceding section we created a country maintenance form and you can see here in the navigation pane that that's still called country tabular. Now I'm actually going to rename this so I'm going to right click and I'm going to select rename I'm just going to change that to Country Maintenance. So what we're going to do is to create a form to maintain trip information. And that information really is the main body of data in the Esprit de Tour database. But we're going to create it in a slightly different way this time. So I'm going to select the trip table. I'm going to go up to the Create tab, and instead of using the Form Wizard like we did previously, I'm just going to click on Form. And what Access will do is create a form, and in this case it's a much more complex form than what we had previously, because we have lots of different fields as opposed to just one in the previous module. And in this section, we're going to work on this form in Layout View. Now we can confirm that we're in layout view on the status bar, so in the bottom right hand corner you can see that if I hover over I have layout view selected because it's highlighted in grey. I could also confirm that by clicking on the view drop down and I can see that layout view is highlighted. And you can also see that I have a form layout tools contextual ribbon with three sub tabs, design, arrange and format. And really, Layout View is a type of design view. And we're going to use this Layout View to do some design work. And as we go through, I will point out the difference between Layout and Design View. So primarily, what we're looking at here is the layout of the form. Now with this particular form, it's a single form type form. So let me use the View button on the Design ribbon to switch into Form View. And I can use the navigation buttons at the bottom of the table to step through the different records, as we saw before. Now the main difference between this form and the one earlier on is that this one has all of the fields that are in the trip table, and they are arranged by default in tabular style. So in form view, if I wanted to modify the activity level, I could utilize the drop down. Now, as I haven't replaced country with the new trip country facility that we created using relationships earlier, I still have the old style country information based on a value list. And if you remember initially, the only value that we had was USA. If I wanted to go in and update the description, I can just click in the field and edit. And the same is actually true for all of these fields. However, this in itself could be quite dangerous. I want you to cast your eyes up to the ID field where we currently have the number four. And you really need to think to yourself, do you want people to be able to go in and change that number? Remember, ID fields are automatically assigned from within access. So that might be something that you don't want people to change. And we're gonna look at how you would restrict that a little bit later on. Let's jump back into Layout View. And it's worth noting that when Access creates a form, it uses a tabular layout. And if I click the plus sign just above and next to the ID field, it will select what is in effect a table on this form. Now, if you've used other Microsoft products, you might be familiar with the concept of a table. You might have created them in Excel or maybe Word. 
And as with those types of tables, you have rows and you have columns. So in this table, we have one row for each field in this trip table. Now, just be careful here because there are really two uses of the word table. So there is the table as in the trip table, and that's essentially a data table in Access, and the table as in the layout table, which is what you can currently see highlighted in orange here. So just be aware that that word table kind of has two different meanings depending on the context. Now each row in this table holds a field from the trip data table and each row has a label and a container for that piece of data. So you can see here the labels would be considered ID, code, trip name, activity level, so on and so forth. And the values are in the next column. Now creating a form in this way gives us a very tidy or neat looking form. Everything's nicely arranged in rows and columns. However, there is a downside. Generally speaking, creating a table in this way is a little bit wasteful of space. If you just take a look in that first field, the ID field, look at the amount of space that you have to the right of the number four. It's not the most efficient use of space. So let's take a look at how we might combat that by changing the layout. So suppose that I think there is far too much space wasted by ID and code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put both of them on the same row. So one way of doing this is to first click in the ID field, make sure that's selected with an orange border, hold down control, and click on its label so that we have both of those selected. Now I'm going to press the delete key and I've essentially deleted that row in the table. Now again, click somewhere within and what I'm going to do is insert a row above the selected row. So I'm going to go to my arrange tab and I'm going to select insert above. So now we have a new empty row at the top. I'm going to click within that row and I'm going to click on split horizontally. Now I'm going to put ID in the selected cell. So in order to do that, I need to click on the design tab and select this option, add existing fields. So now what happens is that you see a panel with a list of all of the available fields from the trip table. So all I need to do is select ID and drag and drop it to where I want it to be. So you can now see the, what that's done. So you can see that I have the ID number and the ID label in for the first two cells. I'm now going to grab code and I'm going to drag it into the remaining cell. And it actually splits that into two cells. So it's got the code label in the left and the data on the right. So now that I have that, I essentially don't need this second row because it would be a duplication of information. So I'm going to select my second row and I'm going to press the delete key. So now I've got a better use of space by putting the ID and the code together on the first row. And I've very quickly been able to make a change to the layout of my form. So this is really one of the best things about Layout View is that it makes it very easy to keep things nicely lined up. Now it's worth noting that I'm not restricted to just controlling the layout. I'm just going to close this field list pane down. Now you can see here that these are a little on the narrow side. I can't quite see all of my text, so I'm just going to make those a little bit bigger to accommodate that. And I'm going to click on Property Sheet. So currently I'm viewing the properties for whichever item I have selected. So in this case, it's the value for the field. And you can see there in the property sheet, it says my selection type is a text box. So for example, if I was to jump to something like activity level, you can see there it says selection type combo box because we have that little drop down there. Now, if I was to select a trip name on the form, you can see there that trip name is considered a label. And one of the things that can be confusing is that labels can tend to have rather generic names. So you can see here, this is called label six. 
So this can make them quite hard to identify. So in general, what I like to do is just to rename them. So I'm going to rename label six to trip name label. So that's just going to make it a lot easier for me to locate. You can see it down there now. Also with this caption, by default, captions take their name of the associated field. So in this example, it's called trip name. Now I might just want to put a space in between there because it really, it's just a caption. Now let me just jump back to ID for a moment because there's another very useful option here under the data tab. You can see here where it says enabled, we have a value of yes. And I'm actually going to change this value to no. Now let me go back into form view and where I have trip name, I can click in here and I can make changes. The same with activity level, country, description. But if I try and click in ID, I can't click in there. So what we've essentially done is we've really locked that field. We've disabled access to that field. So it means that anybody else who's accessing this form isn't going to be able to change the ID number. Now, another important thing to note here is that if I'm using this form for trip maintenance and I wanted to add a new trip, I can use this button down in my navigation area for a new blank record. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in regards to editing forms in layout view. I'm going to save this form as trip maintenance and I will see you in the next module. Hello there and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. In this module we're going to continue looking at forms, in particular in Design View. Now in the preceding section we made a trip maintenance form and most of the customizing was done in Layout View. Now working in Layout View can be quick and you can get good results, but if you really want control, you need to use Design View. Now before we jump into that, I just want to take a moment to look at one of the other options for creating a form, which will eventually lead us into talking about Design View. So I'm going to jump up to the Create tab, and this time I'm going to select Blank Form. And what I get is pretty much what you would expect. I get a completely blank form. Now, if you look on the right hand side in the field list, you'll see that there are no fields listed. So when it comes to adding fields, I don't have any to choose from at the moment. Now I'm just going to click on show all tables. And this is going to basically show me all of the tables in my database. So I'm going to expand tuple trip. And you can see there now I have the fields available to me from that particular table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the code field and you can see that that's now added it to my form. And it's also added it with a label of code. Now before I go any further with this, I just want to take a moment to highlight something very important. I'm going to jump into design view for the trip maintenance form. Now in design view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on any field. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to form properties. And you'll see here the very first property is the record source, which currently says tuple trip. So what we essentially say here is that the trip maintenance form is bound to the trip table as that is the record source. Now I'm just going to close that form down. And I want you to look at the form that we've just created. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to form properties. And you can see something slightly different here. The record source has something different in its field. I'm just going to make this a little bit wider. The record source is instead a query, an SQL query. Now you can't actually see the whole of the query here. Currently it says select tubletrip.code and if I click in there and use my right arrow from tuple trip and a semicolon at the end denotes the end of the query and we're going to cover queries in more detail a little bit later. 
But what this means is that essentially this form is not bound to a whole table, just to a single field. So let's just quickly close that properties sheet. Let's go back to our design tab and I'm going to select add existing fields. And we expanded tuple trip earlier and you can still see all of those fields there. So I'm going to take duration days and double click. So we've now added a second field from the same table. Let's now go back in and look at the properties for the form. And you can see again that the record source has changed again. So it now says select tuple trip code and tuple trip duration days from tuple trip. So it's basically just telling us that we've selected the code and duration days fields from the trip table. So you can probably see how this goes. I'm going to close this down once again and just go back to design and add existing fields. Because we have access to all of our different tables, we can mix and match fields from different tables to build up our form. And the important point to take away here is that a form can be bound to a table or to a query. Now notice that I am currently in layout view. Let's switch to design view. And I'm going to close down my field list for the time being. So in design view, those two fields are there and you can see their labels and I can click on these individually. Now, essentially, these are still within that tabular structure, which is why they're kind of nicely lined up. Now, what would happen if I essentially removed that tabular structure? Well, let's try it. Let's go up to arrange and click on the remove layout button. Now, when I click on this, what I have essentially is free reign to move these around wherever I like. So they're not bound within the structure. And I can drag duration days down here. And you'll see that when I select something like duration days, the label goes with it. So you can see here that that tabular structure that we used to have in place is now gone and I have free reign to drag my fields wherever I want them to be. So this gives you a lot more control when you're designing your forms. Now that is great, but it can also mean a lot of extra work for you. Because that alignment has gone, if you want things neatly aligned, you essentially have to do it yourself. Now there are lots of tools available in Access to help you with this. Now I want to jump across again to the property sheet, and I currently have that code field selected. And if you look at the format options for this field, so I'm going to click on that tab, there is a whole set that tells you how wide and how high the control is, and you can change the color, the background colors, font, all of those kinds of things. So lots of different properties that you can adjust. So let's go in and make a quick change. So here it says top. This is going to control where the field is placed. So I'm going to say I'm going to change that from half an inch to one inch. And you'll see when I click away, you'll see that move. And if I want to do the same for the code label, I can click on that. And I can also change the top there to one inch. So I could also control the alignment options for my fields as well. So if I select everything on here and go up to my range tab, I have an alignment drop down. So I can select to align to top if I wanted to and bring both of those in line. Again, alignment options might be something that you're used to using in other applications like PowerPoint or Word. They work pretty much the same in Access as well. So that's just a quick run through of some of the formatting or stylistic changes you can make. I'm going to close down the property sheet and I'm actually going to close down this form and I'm going to say no to saving the changes. Now, once again, I'm going to create a brand new form. So I'm going to go up to create, and this time we're going to use the form design option. Now, this gives me an empty form, and the empty form has a default size. And it's worth noting that there is no header or footer, and this might be something that we want to add later. Now, I'm going to jump into the property sheet again, and I'm going to select all. And you'll see at the top, there is currently no record source. So this form is not bound to anything at the moment. Now I'm going to click the drop down and I'm going to select the trip table. 
I'm then going to select Add Existing Fields. And you can see there all of the fields available in the trip table. Now, when we've added these fields before, I've been double clicking. You can also drag these fields in order to add them to your form. So I'm going to grab code and we're just going to drop that on. I'm going to take trip name and I'm also going to take activity level. Now, having done that, I would then move the fields and labels around. I might want to resize them, move the labels, check the properties. And I also might want to disable access as we did previously so that those fields cannot be edited. So let's add a few more. Let's add duration days, price minimum and price maximum. Now, having added those fields to the form, what I would normally do is go back and look in form view just to see what that looks like. Now I can see that that doesn't look too great at the moment. I haven't been too careful where I'm placing these fields. And I would say initially, don't worry too much about how the form looks. You want to make sure that you have the information on there and that all of the properties are set correctly. And then normally at the end, I would really pay more attention to the exact placement of these fields and then also the styling of the form, which we'll look at a little bit later. But in general, I would do all of that at the end. So my advice here is to roughly get the design correct first and save the detail for later. Now I'm going to close this form. I'm going to click on close and I'm going to save changes and we're going to call this one FRM trip design and click on OK. And there we go. That's it for this module. I will see you in the next one. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. In the preceding module, we developed a basic form in Design View. And in this module, we're going to go through some other aspects of form design. And this will offer a good starting point for the maintenance of trip information for Esprit de Tour staff as they maintain the details of their trips. Now, the first thing I want to ensure is that I have all of the fields that I need on this form. So I'm going to jump back up to that Add Existing Fields button. And you can see that I haven't yet added the country field. And that's because I'm going to show the countries visited, but I'm going to use the new trip country facility. So we're going to come back to that. So apart from that, the only missing field is the ID field. So I'm just going to grab that and I'm going to drag it and drop it onto the form. And the other field it looks like I don't have is description. So I'm going to grab that as well and just drop that onto my form. Now, my fields are a little bit all over the place. This isn't a particularly attractive looking form at the moment. So in a moment, I'm going to move these fields around into the positions that I want them to appear in. But just before I do that, just one other thing. When we're dealing with maintenance forms, you don't always need to show the name of a field. So you don't always need to have the field label visible. Not having it visible doesn't impair the operation of the form at all. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. You don't necessarily have to have this label there. Now I'm going to move these fields around in a moment into a logical sequence. And I'm also going to rename the label fields and change the words in the labels. So I'm going to close my field list. I'm going to open up my property sheet and I'm going to do all of those things. So join me in a couple of moments when I've done that. So there we go. I've rearranged some of the fields in my form. I've also done some things like I've removed the label for ID and code. And I've also renamed some of these other labels just to make them a little bit easier to understand. So the next thing to do is to work out how big each field needs to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open form view. And I can look at my form and I can kind of get an idea as to which fields could be a little bit narrower or which fields need to be slightly bigger. So I can see here that ID could probably do with being much narrower and also the code field could probably be a bit narrower as well. I'm going to want to widen out that trip name field so I can see more of the trip name. Now, I'm not going to approach this in a scientific manner. I'm just really going to adjust the size of the fields and then run through the existing data to make sure everything fits. 
So let's go back into Design View. And I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to make the ID field a little bit smaller. I'm also going to make that code field a bit smaller. And I'm going to make trip name quite a bit wider. And while I'm here, I might as well make description a bit wider as well. Like so. Now let's see how that looks. Let's right click and go into form view. Yeah, I can see that looks a little bit better, but there's a couple of other changes I want to make. So I could do with making these even smaller and duration days, and I might want to add a bit more height to the description. So let's just do those changes as well. So make ID even smaller. Code can do with going in a bit. I'm going to make duration days smaller. And I'm going to give the description a bit more vertical room. Let's do one final check. There we go. So I'm reasonably happy with that. You, you could spend all day doing this, but I'm reasonably happy that that looks not too bad as it is. So the next thing I want to look at is alignment. Now I've done a, a fairly decent job of aligning up these fields just by eye, but we can get a little bit more granular with regards to alignment. So let's jump back into design view. Now what I want to do is I want to align all of the controls in the top row. So I'm going to select all of the fields by holding down my control key. I'm going to go up to the arrange tab. I'm going to select a line and I'm going to say align to top. And what that will do is it will align all of the fields to whichever control is at the top. And I think mine were pretty much aligned anyway, so not too much of movement there. I'm going to click away to deselect. So now I'm going to select a trip name. We're going to say duration, description and price max. And I'm going to align those to the right. So again, that just looks a little bit neater. And I might actually want to have this description label aligned over this side. So I'm going to disconnect it from the actual value field. I'm then going to select ID, activity level, description and price min. Go to align and I'm going to say align left. So let's switch to form view and see what this now looks like. Ah, there we go. It's actually looking pretty nice. Now, one thing to notice here is that the code is currently selected. So if I was a user using this form and I press my tab key, it goes to trip name, activity level, duration, then it jumps over description, goes to price minimum, price max, and then it comes round to the unique ID. Now, the order in which you can tab through these fields is something you can control. So let me show you where you can find that. Let's go back into Design View. We're going to go to the Design tab and you can see here you have a button for Tab Order. And this shows you the order in which a user can tab through the field. So code is at the top, so it's always going to start on the code field. Now, Ordinarily, you probably want users to start at the first field in your form, which in this case is ID. So I might want to change this order by just dragging and dropping ID up to the top. Like so. Alternatively, I have a button here called auto order. So if I select that, that's going to order all of my fields based on the positions that I have them in the form. So let me see, we've got ID, code, trip name, activity level, duration days, description, price min, price max. So that is the order that I want people to be able to tab through the fields in. So I'm going to click on OK. And now if we go back to form view, you can see that the ID is selected this time. Now the final thing I want to show you here is just how to add a header and footer into this form. So again, on the design tab, you'll see you have a group that says header and footer, and you can choose to add a logo, a title or a date and time. So I'm going to click on title. Now the default title is just the name of the form. So I'm going to change that title. And 
And I'm also going to change the alignment of this text in my header. So currently it's aligned to the left, but because I have this field selected with the orange border, if you look over at the property sheet, you'll see about halfway down, and we could make this a bit easier for ourselves by clicking on the format tab. You can see halfway down, we have a text align option, which is currently set to left. So I'm gonna change that to center to move that title across. Now I'm also going to insert a date and time into my header and footer. Now I've got both options selected, so include date and include time. I'm not actually going to include time uh, for this form. That is a little bit of overkill. I'm just going to have the date and I'm going to select the second option here of the 22nd of October 2019 and I'm going to click on OK. And I don't know if you can see it very small in the top corner here. We have a form field. So here we have equals date. And whilst we're in this design view, you're kind of going to get, be able to see the coding that sits behind this date. When we switch to view the actual form, you will see the actual date. So don't worry too much about that. But I actually don't want my date in my header. I want it in my footer. So I'm going to grab the field and I'm just going to do a cut. So a control X on my keyboard. I'm going to scroll down to the form footer and I'm going to do a control V to paste that in. So now I have that pasted into my footer and I actually want the date to display over here on the right hand side. And I can simply do that just by stretching this field out a little bit. So I'm just going to stretch that all the way across. And there we go. And if I check my property sheet over here, I can see that I have my text lined to the right. So let's now see how all of that looks by jumping into form view. And there we go. That's looking pretty good. I've got my center title at the top. I've got my aligned fields and I have my date showing at the bottom there. So we've covered quite a few aspects of form design and there are so many more that I haven't covered. And we will cover some of these things as we go through the course, like themes and formatting. But for now, I'm going to close my form. I'm going to save the changes. And I'm actually going to make that my trip maintenance form. So the one that's currently called trip maintenance, I'm going to rename. Now I tend to have a naming convention and if it's an old copy of something, I generally just put an underscore and then old on the end. I'm then going to rename my trip design form to trip maintenance. And that's now my working trip maintenance form. That's the end of this module. I will see you in the next one. For the next section, you'll want to download the course exercise files. Click the link below in the video description to get these. You can also scroll through the details to find timestamps for each section in this course. If you're enjoying this training, please leave us a comment. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. It's now time for exercise five, and all I need you to do is to create a movie maintenance form. On this form, I want you to include the title, directors, year of release, and runtime, but I don't want you to add the genre at the moment. We'll get onto that later on. Now you might display the ID, but make sure that the person maintaining the list cannot access the ID. Now you can see that I've done some work on the styling and it's fairly similar to the styling which we applied to the genre maintenance form. I want you to make sure that the tab order is correct and note that I have also included the date and time on the bottom of the form in the center. Now, some of these fields with regards to sort of the placement of the title and the placement of the footer may look a little bit out of whack at the moment, but we're definitely going to deal with that later on. So you should finish up with an answer that is similar to mine. Also note that I have changed some of the way that the label controls are displayed, and that is kind of personal preference. But if you want to do that, then please feel free to do that as well. That's all I need you to do in exercise five. See how you go with that and I will see you in the next module.
Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. In this module we're going to start to take a look at subforms. Now the idea of a subform is that it's a form within a form and we generally use a subform to show repeated values in a form. So for example let's open up the new trip maintenance form and remember, we haven't included the country or countries on this form. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a subform and each row can be one of the countries that the trip visits. Now, people go about adding subforms in a few different ways. The way that I tend to do it is that I generally build the subform first and then I add it to my main form. So that's the way that I'm going to do it on this occasion, just to keep things consistent. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, close down this trip maintenance form. I know we've just opened it, but we're going to come back to that in a moment. And I'm going to go and create a new form. So let's go to the Create tab and I'm going to select Form Design. Now this form is going to contain a list of the countries visited on a trip. And this form in this instance is going to be bound to the trip country table. So that's really the first job that we have to do. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to open up the property sheet. And I'm going to make sure that I have forms selected at the top here. I'm going to jump across to this data tab and I'm going to make sure that the record source is trip country. Now I'm going to use all of the fields from trip country. So let's go to add existing fields. And you can see we have ID, trip ID and country. So let's go through and add each of these to our form. So I'm going to double click on ID, double click trip ID, double click on country. I'm then going to go in and I'm just going to remove these field labels just by clicking on them and pressing the delete key on my keyboard. I'm then just going to do a little bit of rearranging. So I'm going to take this ID field and I'm going to move it up here. And I'm also going to make that a bit smaller because I don't need too much room for that one. Let's take trip ID and move that up. Maybe want to make that slightly smaller and country just there. And just to make sure that they're all perfectly in line, I'm going to hold down my control key, select them all. I'm going to go to my arrange tab the Align drop down and I'm just going to say Align to top, like so. Now something else I might want to do just to make this look a little bit nicer is just to resize the entire form. I don't really need all this space if these are the only three fields I have on my form. So I can choose to make this a little bit smaller, like so. OK, so let's jump back to the design ribbon and just go back to the property sheet make sure that you have forms selected in the top field there and jump back to the format tab and it's worth noting the default view here is not going to be single form it's going to be data sheet do i allow form view well in this case no do i allow data sheet view yes Allow layout view, we're going to say no for that as well. I'm going to close down my property sheet and I'm going to close down my form. And of course, it's going to ask me if I want to save changes. So I'm going to say yes. And I now need to give my form a name. And in this case, I'm going to give the form a name that reflects what the form shows. So I'm going to say FRM trip country and click on OK. And you should see now that that's been added on the left hand side in my navigation pane underneath forms. I now have FRM trip country. So now we're going to jump back to that trip maintenance form and we're going to go into design view. So now we're in the trip maintenance form. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag the form a little bit over to the right to give us some room in there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a control on the form. Now we have dealt with controls previously so if you remember back we've inserted controls by adding fields to the form 
And whenever you add a field, you get whatever the specified control for that field is. So we're adding a subform. Now the control that we need to add for the subform, you'll find it up here in this controls group. So let's click on the more arrow. And it's this one just here. When you hover over, it will say subform sub report. So let's click that. So now I've selected that, I'm just going to draw it on the screen. Now, don't worry too much about the size or the position. We're going to sort that all out later. But for the time being, just draw a big text box like that. And what you'll see is that what will automatically pop up is the subform wizard. Now, remember, every time a wizard pops up, this is there to help you. And it makes it super simple for me to define which form is controlling this subform. So I'm going to say use an existing form and I'm going to select trip country and click next. Now in this next stage, Axis is asking us, would we like to define which fields link your main form to this subform yourself or choose from the list below? So what's actually going on here is that what Axis does is it looks at the form in trip maintenance and sees that that is bound to the trip table. It then looks at the trip country subform, which is what we've just selected, and it can see that that is bound to the trip country table. And it says, what must the link between these two things be? How are they connected? So it's attempting to identify a master field and a child field, which it thinks is the basis for the relationship between these two forms. And you can see it's given me a list there of things that I could link between the two. Alternatively, I could define my own. So in this instance, I'm actually going to define my own. And what I'm going to say is that the ID field links to the trip ID in the sub form. So that's the ID field from trip maintenance links to the trip ID in my sub form. Now, it's worth noting that you can go back in and change these in the property sheet if you want to afterwards, but this is a good starting point. Let's click next. You can see here it's picked up the name of my subform, so FRM Trip Country, and I'm going to click finish. And there we go. Now I'm going to click on the property sheet and I'm going to click on the data tab. And this is where you can see where the source object is the linked master field, the link child field. So if you want to go in and change these, you're perfectly able to do that after the fact. Alternatively, you didn't have to use that wizard at all. If you just click cancel, you could have just come into this property sheet and manually defined everything yourself. And what you will find in there is that Access normally does a pretty good job of working out itself what you want to link together. So a lot of the time you might come into here and find that it's already added this master and child field for you. But again, as I said, you could go in and change it if it does get it a little bit wrong. So I'm just going to close down my property sheet. I'm just going to make this box a little bit taller because we can't quite see all of those fields that we've added. Now, one little thing that I'm going to change here is I can see that it's named it FRM Trip Country because that's what we selected in the wizard. Now, I'm just going to change that by jumping up to the property sheet. I'm going to go to the All tab. And I'm going to change the name of this little subform. I'm going to call it country subform. Just makes it a little bit easier to identify. So now that we've done that, let's close down our property sheet and let's try opening our form. I'm going to go into form view. And one thing I can already see here is that my little box that I drew isn't quite wide enough. And it looks like I need to make some design changes. So this trip I feel is way too large and I can't see the rest of the information. So again, if you find that there are things that you need to change, you can just jump back into design view and I might want to make my form a little bit wider. I'm going to make this trip ID field a lot smaller. I'm going to move this along and I'm going to drag this out. And then I'm going to jump back into form view. And I can see that that looks a little bit better. We can at least see the country field now. Now let's see what happens when we start to step through the record. So at the moment we're on the Grand Canyon family rafting adventure and using my buttons at the bottom to move through the records, I'm going to move to the next record, Iconic Italy. 
Family Safari, no country assigned there yet. So of course we haven't set up the countries for most of the trips, but the ones that we have appear to be working okay. So if we go backwards again, we can see Italy in there and the USA in there. So if I go to the table trip country, you can see there what I mean. Those are the only two countries that I currently have set up, which is why it's pulling through the information for those two and not the other countries. So what I could do is I could set up the rest of the countries in the trip country table, but why don't we try a new form? So let's jump back to trip maintenance and let's just move through to, let's go to record nine, Croatia. So I'm gonna click in the country field Click the drop down, select Croatia, and that's been accepted, so that looks fine. So let's try another one. So let's go forward to the next record. So this is Cuba. I'm going to click and I'm going to select Cuba. Now I'll just do a couple more. So let's move forward. Now this is one of the trips that goes to two countries. So I'm going to select Maldives and then I can go to the record below and select the other country that this trip goes to. And let's do one more. So this one goes to the USA. Okay, let's jump back to the trip country table again. Now, notice that when I go back to this table, nothing seems to be added in this country field. But if I go up to my ribbon and just do a refresh all, and there you can see that now those countries have been updated. So the form and the subform seem to be working together well. And I'm gonna show you one more little thing before we move on to the next module. Now, if you look in this subform that we've created, we have an ID field and a trip ID field. Now, whilst these are helpful in determining which records to pull out the trip country table, they're not really useful for end users. So end users who are using this form aren't really required to see these two fields. So what you can do is you can hide them. So I'm going to select the country field. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say hide fields. And I'm going to do exactly the same for trip ID. So now we're just left with country. And if you wanted to just to tidy this up, you could stretch out that country field as well, just to make it look a little bit neater. So that is a perfectly reasonable way of setting up a sub form. In the next module, I want to show you a slightly different approach, so I will see you over there. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. In the preceding section, we added a subform to the trip maintenance form, and the approach we used is to use a datasheet. Now, with the datasheet, as it's configured here, a user can add or delete countries from the list of countries visited on a trip, but there might be situations where you just want to display the information so that no one can edit it. Now, with regards to this trip maintenance form, we'll need to have both options. So, for example, staff using this form need to be able to do things like add countries, delete countries, etc., Whereas when the information is being displayed to people booking a trip, you don't really want them to be able to go in there and make any changes. So in this module, I'm going to show you an alternative approach to subforms and also show you how to restrict what people can do with regards to the information in those subforms. Now I could start again with this subform, but it's also possible to change a subform that's already been added. So I'm going to close the trip maintenance form and I'm going to open the trip country subform in design view. Now I'm just going to click on the property sheet to open that up. Now, as I mentioned before, you don't really need to see the ID and the trip ID field. However, it is important to know that they are there. And even with fields that you can't see, the information is still available to access. So for example, if you've hidden a field, that information is still there. If we look at our property sheet, the record source is the trip country table. Our default view is data sheet. And I'm actually going to change that to continuous forms. 
Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the ID from the form. So let's click on it and press delete. And let's do the same for trip ID as well. And just press delete. I'm then going to take my country field and I'm just going to adjust that very slightly. Let's move it over. Let's resize that out a little bit like so. And I might want to even bring the bottom of the form up. Now I'm going to close my property sheet and I'm going to close my trip country form. I'm going to say yes to save the changes. And now I'm going to go into trip maintenance in design view. So now I'm just going to tidy this country field up a little bit. So I'm going to just drag that out a little bit and also drag the actual field out. So it takes up a little bit more room. I'm going to move this label up very slightly. I'm going to change the caption to countries visited and close down that property sheet. And in fact, this looks a little bit too wide for me. Let's move that in a little bit. And again, I might want to move the whole form in as well. So you can make whichever design changes you like to this particular form. Actually, one more thing I'm going to do here is with this label, I'm actually going to drag that all the way out. I want this label to be in the middle. So I'm going to drag it out, go to my property sheet, text align, I'm going to say center. So you can make whatever adjustments you like. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click and jump back into form view. And what you can see is a very different sub form. So notice it's no longer a data sheet. So if I wanted to add another country, say Antarctica, I can go there, add it, and that works just fine. And I could go through and add other countries if I wanted to. And let's add another one. So let's add Canada. Now also note your little select buttons at the bottom to move you through your records. So for any time I wanted to delete a particular record, I can just select it, press the delete key. It will ask me to confirm and it's gone. So that's a perfectly good way of doing maintenance on countries without seeing the IDs. Now what I'm going to do next is to add a whole bunch of countries to this trip. So let's go in and add a couple more. Let's do Canada and let's also add Costa Rica. Now it's worth noting that not all of these countries does this trip run to. But just as an example, as soon as the list of countries that you've added gets longer than the space provided, you will see a scroll bar come up at the side. So just remember that you have that there if you want to continue adding more countries. Now, from a maintenance point of view, this probably looks like it's going to work absolutely fine. But what am I going to do if all I want to do is display a list of countries? So let's close out of the trip maintenance form. and look at the trip country subform in design view. And I'm going to go straight into bringing up that property sheet, our old favorite. And I'm going to click on the all button so I can see all of those different properties. And the first one I want to look at is about halfway down where it says navigation buttons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that from yes to no. I'm now going to scroll down to some of these properties towards the bottom. So here where it says allow additions, I'm going to change that from yes to no. Allow deletions, no. And allow edits, we're going to say also no to that. Let's disable record selectors as well. So let's change that to a no. I'm going to close out of my property sheet and close out of my trip country. And I'm going to say yes to save the changes. Let's go back to trip maintenance. Now, when we come to the sub form, you can see that I can still use my scroll bar and I can click the drop down and I can still see all of the countries. But if I try and change USA to something like Cuba, it doesn't let me. So I've essentially disabled access to changing those fields. So I really have no way of adding or deleting those countries. 
Now, when you look at this subform, you might think to yourself, based on what we've just talked about, well, what is the actual point of having these drop downs? So what you might want to do is change these combo boxes to standard text boxes. So what you've basically seen there is using continuous forms in a way that totally protect the data in the subform. Now, I just want to demonstrate one other useful field. If you consider the country field in the trip country table record, if you look down at the field properties and go to the lookup tab, you'll see that it says display control combo box. Now, this is the default. So it is a lookup field. So therefore, in normal circumstances, you're going to give people a list of values that they can look up. But just remember that it doesn't always have to be a combo box. It could be a text box or a list box. So you could change that property just there. Alternatively, if I just close down trip country and open up the form trip country, what I could do is I could right click on this country field and you'll see that in the menu that pops up, if I go to change to, I can change it to a text box or a list box. So they're currently the only options I have available for this particular property. So I'm going to change this to text box. I'm now going to close this subform, and I'm going to go back into my trip maintenance and you'll see that I now no longer have that drop down next to the countries on the right hand side. So all the user can see is that specific list of countries. What I've also done here is I've just removed the border around the subform just to make it look a little bit neater. And as I said, of course, you can always go back in and make any changes to this design that you want to. So I can see I've got a little bit of a gap just here. I might want to jump into design and just drag this border in so that it looks a little bit neater, which I'll probably do in a moment. So now what we essentially have is a subform that is display only. That's the end of this section. I will see you in the next one. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. In this module, we're going to introduce a new entity into the Esprit de Tour database. We're going to introduce the Tour. Now, if you remember, we did mention this towards the beginning of the course. A Tour is an instance of a trip. And a Tour is identified by two things, trip code and start date. So, for example, a trip starting on a specific start date is a tour. And there will only be one tour of a trip starting on a particular date so that we don't run the same tour with the same dates more than once. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a tour table. So we're going to go up to the Create tab and we're going to select Table Design. And what I really want to do here is to demonstrate something else about primary keys. So the first field in the new table, this is going to be called a uh, trip code. And it's a short text field. And the trip code is going to be no more than maximum three characters. So in our properties, let's change it to three. We're going to say allow zero length. We're going to say no. Is it indexed? Yes. And duplicates in this case are OK. So the next field is going to be start date and the data type for this. And because this is a date field, the most important thing at this stage is to select a format for the date. So I'm going to select date and time. And then again, down in my properties in format, this will be somewhat determined by the locale that you're using. So I'm going to say short date. Is it required? Yes, it is. So let's just change that. Is it indexed? Yes, it is. And duplicates are OK. The next field is going to be price adult. And the data type for this one is going to be currency. It is required, so we'll change that to yes. And is it indexed? Yes, it is. And finally, we're going to have price child. Again, this is going to be a currency data type. Required, yes. Index, yes. 
I'm just going to add a description in for these final two. So I'm just going to say here, adult price. And here I'm going to say child price. Zero denotes adult trip. So these are really the only fields we need at this stage. Now notice in this table, I haven't added a unique ID and I've done that deliberately, not because I wouldn't normally add one, because for this type of table, I probably would. But I just want to demonstrate to you that you can get by without one because there may be some instances where you need to do so. So there still needs to be a unique way of identifying records in a table. Now, in this case, none of these fields would really be considered unique. However, I can create a unique primary key for this table, not by adding a unique ID, but by combining two fields together. So I'm going to select trip code. I'm going to hold down my control key and also select start date. And I'm going to click on my primary key button on my ribbon. So those two fields together are going to be the primary key on my table. And you can see that I now have that little key icon just down here at the side next to those two fields. I'm going to just finish this off and add some descriptions. So for trip code. Now I need to do a couple of other things to this table. I need to put in some validation for price adult and price child. So in the case of price adult, I will need it to be positive. And in the case of price child, it will need to be greater than or equal to zero because a zero price is indicating this is an adults only trip. So let's select both of these and put in the validation rule and the validation text. So we're going to start with price adult. I'm going to go down to my field properties and I'm going to add in my validation rule, which is greater than zero. Validation text. Adult price must be positive. Let's go to price child. Validation rule greater than or equal to zero. Validation text. And there we go, that's the validation done. Now what we need to do is to set up a relationship between trip and tour, and those are linked by the three character code. So I'm going to save this table. I'm gonna call this one tuple tour. And now we need to set up a relationship between trip and tour. So let's jump up to database tools and select relationships. And let's add in our new table, which is just here. I'm just going to do a little bit of rearranging. So we're going to set up a relationship between the code field in the trip table and the trip code field in the tour table. And you've seen how to do this before. It's very straightforward. We just drag and we drop and we get our edit relationships dialog box. I'm going to say enforce referential integrity and click create and a little bit more rearranging just to make it look a little bit neater. And now I'm going to close that relationships window. So the next step is to create a sub form in which we can display the tours for a particular trip. So I'm going to go up to create and form design. And the first thing I'm going to do as always is just to bring up that property sheet. I'm going to click on my data tab and I'm going to just set that record source to tuple tour. Let's change some of these other properties. So I'm going to go to the All tab. And I'm going to change the default view from single form 
to continuous forms. I'm going to say allow form view, no. We're going to allow data sheet view, but we're not going to allow layout view. So now we've defined those basic properties, I'm just going to start to add those fields onto my form. So let's go to add existing fields. I'm going to select start date, price adult and price child. I'm just going to drag this form in and also up. And again, I might want to get a little bit granular and select all of these fields and then just make sure that those are aligned to the top, like so. Now that's all been done in a fairly approximate way and I am going to be adding a couple more things later on, but you will find that with this you get into a routine of how you like to check things. So for instance, you might always get into the routine of checking the uh, tab order. So I can see there, start date, price adult, price child, looks pretty good to me. Click on OK. Now at this stage, we are making a maintenance form for Tor, so we will need to think about things like navigation buttons and also the ability to add and delete records in the sub form. So all of those things might need to be enabled. Now I'm going to close this form, so let's close that field list first, close the form down, and we're going to save our changes. I'm going to call this FRM Trip Tour. Click on OK. And let's go back into Trip Maintenance. And let's add that new subform. So if you remember from before, we went up to Controls, selected the drop down, and there is our icon for subform. I'm just going to add it down the bottom here. We're going to draw a nice big box like so. And we used the subform wizard last time, but this time I'm going to cancel out of here. And you can see within here, it currently says unbound, so it's not tied or linked to any particular table. So I could do this manually by going into the property sheet. And the first thing I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to take this little label and I'm going to drag that all the way out. I'm going to go into my properties and I'm going to change the text alignment to center. Now looking at our subform report, you can see in the property sheet, it's currently called child 20, which isn't particularly meaningful. So let's give that a different name. The source object is that new form. And you can see now that as soon as I select that, I now get my fields on my form. And let's just jump to that data tab and just check the link master fields and the link child fields. So code and trip codes, so that all looks fine. Now I haven't got any data yet, so I'm going to add some data in a moment. But for now, I'm going to save this as it is. Now I'm going to import some Tor information and I have my Tor information stored in a tab delimited text file and you'll find this text file, it's called espritator tor import.txt in the course files folder. And you can see at the top we have our headers, so trip code, start date, price adult, price child. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this into the database and hopefully it will populate the trip tour table and we'll be able to look at some of the tours and the prices in the sub form. Now I need to point out that I'm recording this course in November of 2019. If you're following this course at a later time, you might want to go through and change the dates in this text file. So hopefully these should be good, they're sort of for the next couple of years, but if you are coming to this course quite a while in the future, then please feel free to go through and just edit some of these dates so it's more suitable for the time period that you're running it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go away and I'm going to import this data into my database. So it looks like my import has been successful. 
and I can step through the trips and see the various instances of tours related to those trips. Let's just go back to the Grand Canyon family rafting adventure. And I mentioned changing the dates after you've done the import. So when we create a table with a date and time field, by default, it gets a little date picker. So if I need to change a date just here where it says start date, I can click the little calendar and I can go in and select a different date from there. Now, one of the things about this current arrangement is that although I have a number of tours, they're not in any particular date sequence. I'm going to fix that now, but see if you can work out how to do that for yourself. So that's it for this module. In the next module, all that's left to do is an exercise, so I will see you over there. Hello there and welcome back to our course on Access 2019. It's now time for exercise six and this exercise involves you doing quite a few different things. The first thing is to create a country table in the Night Movies database. And this is going to be used as a lookup for the actor information that we're going to talk about next. So essentially, as you add actors to the database, you'll be confirming that their country of birth is in that country list and also selecting their country of birth. So that's the first part of the job. The second part of the job is to create an actor table. Now in time, you may well have dozens of pieces of information about actors, but we're starting off with a pretty basic set of information. And I've listed out all the fields I've used, and you can of course list your own fields with your own name. So if you have a particular naming convention that you've been using, you can change those. But I will say, if you do start to make changes to these, be careful when it comes to importing data to ensure that you rename the field names in the import file to what you've renamed them in the table. So in my actor table, I have the ID. I have actor name as full name of the actor. I have their given name, so that might be John, for example, followed by the family name, which might be Smith. Gender will either be M or F for male or female. The country of birth or birth country will be taken from the new country table. The born date is the, their date of birth and the died date is obviously the date of their death. And remember, not all actors in your database are going to have a died date. Now, what I've done just to help you out a little bit is I've provided you with kind of like a starter pack of actors arranged into a tab delimited text file. So you can see the top one up there. We have actor name Harrison Ford, given name is Harrison, family name Ford, gender is male, birth country USA, and then we have the born date of 7-13-1942, and we have no died date because he is in fact still alive at the time that this course was published. Now, if you look back at the movie info that's in the same folder in the exercise files, you'll find that I've covered a number of actors in that info, so this should give you a good start. What you then need to do is to create a relationship between movie and actor. And of course, remembering that a movie may have many actors in it and an actor may have been in many movies. And there's a couple of clues as to how to do this in the relationships window. Now, again, bearing in mind that I haven't done any formatting to this, haven't made any attempt to make it look particularly pretty. Here is the first movie with the next part of the job completed. So I've added the leading players. So that's the two leading actors in the Shawshank Redemption. Now I've deliberately put the ID numbers of those two actors in there. And when you come to import the two people in question, so Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman might not have the same numbers as me. And you might be worried seeing those numbers in there, but don't worry, I'm going to explain to you how to put that right a bit later on. So that's it for exercise six, quite a lot of work for you to do in there. And if you really have time and want to do more, why don't you create an actor maintenance table and in the actor's maintenance table, create a movie subform that shows the movies that actor has been in. Now, that part is completely optional, but if you do want to really get into it and test your skills, then that's a little extra add-on that you might want to do. 
That's it for exercise six. I will see you in the next section. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the course exercise files and follow along with this video, click over there. And click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.